Alrighty, let's go here. No sound for now. Ooh, he took it hard already. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Oh, I took it hard as well. <laughs> I would love for that horse to stay like that all the time. Like this is super polished, super polished. You got effects and lighting and sound effects, everything. And then the horse comes in. <laughs> Wait, where is it? Comes in like this. That'd be so awesome. It's super cool. Yeah. Okay. So let me quickly check because I got some thoughts on some of the animation. Let me just see where you're at and what your plan was for the creatures and humans. So there will definitely be sound design and cloth. Let me go beat by beat. Let's start with this guy. I think for frame one, what do you want to do? Uh, I don't. I don't see anything in the email regarding the background. It helps to have this here, but I would already have either some, I don't know what you want to do, like some mountains in the background, or if you just want to do temp, um, you know, spheres, uh, poly stuff in the back, just so we can see what the camera's doing. It's not for long, because we're getting straight into this, but I would think in terms of what do we see, are the clouds here, the sun maybe, something in terms of the composition. And then think of frame one where this is a bit of a tricky silhouette. We don't see much uh, in terms of what the, here the neck is doing. And I think like this being frame one would already be better. So I would probably, since he is, or the dragon is kind of gliding down, this feels almost like on action, like something happened before, as usually there, something is happening before. But I would probably just bring the wings out and then maybe keep that tail here and have that head down. It's already looking. It's tracking this guy already, but we are from the very beginning in a nicer pose. I know this is cool in terms of contrast of getting into this pose. So I understand that there might be an issue of where we're always in this and it could feel static, but it could be something where maybe it's already higher up in a bend pose where you're it's it's doing a, an upwards flap. You know what I mean? And you can still have something like this. And then we go up into that. I would just make sure that the beginning silhouette is cleaner than this like that might be tricky because this comes out of the head like something like that but it could still be lower you can still have the classic fold on upper wing flap here or you know recovery flap there that would be that in terms of the animation i feel like right around here what is this frame get that a little bit here frame 22 for me it feels like we're hitting an invisible wall. And this could just be because the camera is stopping as well. And this is why we want objects here to understand the camera move. But this is already coming in here. So if I look at this, it might be just a bit harsh how we're tilting down. If you look at the horizon line, it's, it's not linear, which is good. I think you can overshoot down and come up a bit to so tilt down and up to reframe because what's happening for a moment here you're getting into this beginning and right around here if i put uh my ocean uh, my ocean skinning <laughs> my onion skinning here see how that head is locked so we're getting into this spot and then boom head is locked head is locked and even here you could draw a line right there right the head goes up and then see how that head is locked on that line. So watch out for that. So it's 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 tricky sometimes to animate a character, especially flying, to a moving camera. So it's going to be a bit of a back and forth. So what I would do is I will make sure that from a different view, sides, front, static, nothing with pen and tilt and blah blah blah. Make sure the path is all correct. So there's no sudden flattening. Or like the head goes down and comes back up. The chest will follow that path. There's some, you know, all the correct drag and overlap for the creature. And then you put in the camera, how you want to lens it and how you want the handheld feel. And then you can decide, okay, well, technically the dragon is correct. Do I want to then cheat the dragon animation to camera to make it look correct? Or do I cheat the camera to make the path look correct? Sometimes it's a bit of both. Sometimes you can do whatever you want to choose. But right now... The animation and the camera fighting, creating that locked feel in some points there. And we also, I think you are 
that's my horribly drawn middle here. See how we're always in there? We're leaving a lot of room left here. I think you can also imagine it might be too uh, a destructive change here in terms of like how much you want to move this. But what if this guy comes in like this? Comes down to the left, you know what I mean? And comes this way to then almost exit right. So we're not stuck in, in basically... See that we're, we're a lot in this area. It's almost like it's staged for for uh, social media where you know you might have something that's widescreen landscape mode but then at the same time you want to post this somewhere TikTok, instagram reels and it's framed like that which there's nothing wrong with that nowadays sometimes depending on where you want to post things you gotta almost plan for both but within that line if you would put in your own uh safe title you know the the just kind of What's it called? My English is escaping me. The camera, whatever. <laughs> Imagine you got your mask. That's what I want to say. Your mask. Your, your mask is left, right. You still have room within that. So within that mask, well, fancy with two colors. You can still move. I mean, you can still have edge to edge movement in there a little bit, just to kind of push that a little bit more. Then on the exit, I think we're we're panning over too fast if you look at a stone here or whatever you want to have as a tracking you can look at, at this line here see that how we're suddenly moving in it's not like a super broad linear key but we're panning pretty quickly to the right and i think for this character we can easily be here like that far to the right usually the camera person is late so whatever is on camera is driving the camera action, if that makes sense. And right now it feels a bit like that camera person knows to some degree, it's not like that dragon's gonna make a crazy change. Like it's, you know, weight and path and, and flight dynamics. You know, it's gonna to go to the right, but I think we're just a bit too early anticipating that camera move. And I think given that we're resting here, that's the main action is this. I think you, you can be you can pan later, 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 later. And then we get to, you know, right around here. When this action happens, they might be here. And I think that's fine. Because then we settle on this. I think that should be fine. The tricky thing too, this is for you. You might have to explore either temp lighting so we understand what your plan is or different colors or starting to add hardware fog because the tricky thing is the hue and value the colors everything all of this here except this guy and this really starts to blend in like that we don't quite understand what is going on like all i'm seeing if i just watch the dragon i'm seeing this and then this that's what i'm noticing so could this be could there be fire Haze it out with lots of smoke, put some hardware fog, haze it out, put some red lights in there. Maybe have some like right, uh, right, red um, geometry that you just copy paste, copy paste with on off, on off or flickering. So imagine this here. <laughs> All of this behind them is on fire. Again, I'm not saying that's what you should do, but think in terms of maybe lighting, there's something going on back there. And because of that bright color, it silhouettes the foreground characters and gives them rim lights where we really understand all the edges and the silhouette just a bit better just think potentially and if you don't want to go that far um maybe just like within the play blast the key light you know this could also be the sun could be setting so you have a nice rim light through there and then as all of this happens there's just a very strong red rim light like this you know, it just it will highlight and separate those characters. And I would still put in, obviously, the skies. It's not all gray. Uh, and hardware fog to haze it out a little bit. Just for foreground, mid-ground, background layers. And then for this, what strikes me with this guy, like he's very... I know you want it to be real, real-ish. But I think it's okay for stuff like that to go a bit further like because this is what is what am i looking at this is some 
creaturey orc something. Some creature. It's not human. So that gives you license to go, you know what? I'm attacking this guy, but I'm going to be like, Rrr. maybe even one armed. Rrr. And then over time, two arms. Rrr. And just push that a bit more. While this guy is the, the stiffer because he has metal plate here. He is in an armor and he's human. That could be an interesting contrast. What I would avoid though is stuff like this where the head and the chest are fairly aligned in the orientation. I see that the head is doing more, but he looks more like Batman, Michael Keaton Batman, where he can't turn his neck. <laughs> so the body and the head are kind of moving as one. Watch out for that. And again, because you have this guy move in front of it, we're losing all of this in terms of silhouette. So you have to work a bit more into a stronger silhouette where we don't have like this overlaps, this overlaps, this gets in this guy's face. We just got to work on something like this. That's a clean moment. But we're losing this prop in this set. So with lighting and everything, this will hopefully stand out more. But you might have to consider and this might be lower and then he drags it up with more of a drag like this up like that. So we don't have overlapping shapes like this. I know it's fast. But on something, again, because of the colors and the proximity and everything, I think you want to keep every frame as clean as you can for silhouette. Even here, when he goes into, and you want to enjoy this moment, he's already up there covering this guy. And now we got overlap over overlap with the same value here. It's, again, hard to understand what's going on. This is cool, though. Like, this almost works as like a 3D piece, 3D glasses. Like, past camera. I think one other thing you can do is give those weapons a bit more weight this is pretty small i get that this goes up and immediately into this this guy feels like paper so it would have to be and hold this a bit longer into this and if that means you got to slow down a little bit of a moment through there with these guys that's okay because you just hit this guy so this guy could go maybe bring up a hand here to, to maybe pull out the axe and this guy is already looking back but because maybe this might be staged over here. So this guy would be here and then the human would be here. So there's separation because we're kind of missing the fact that this guy's looking back and is ready. Like one frame, then we don't see him. So just watch out. You might have to globally stage this guy over there or tweak the camera bit if this is all fairly fixed. This here. We have no idea what he's doing. He goes down and he still has his axe something in there right and then it's like i don't see is it a sword okay it's a sword so don't quite see it this would have to be here but then this character is more here and you can stay there and then it's more like you know it's maybe not that close but it's just camera wise we're not human or creature whatever camera camera would have to be here so there's a bit more of a cleaner silhouette because you're overlapping all three characters like we're, we're missing everything because this guy's still struggling. Obviously, he still has the thing in him. That's awesome. I like this. So once we're here, that's cool. It's all clean. I think given that this guy's struggling, you could also do something and go like, and he's already slowly bent on his knees. He's kind of like oh, back here. One arm trying to get this out. The other arm is trying to hold on to the sword, but the sword is heavy. It's going to drag this arm down. And this guy is trying and trying. Like, he's trying to get this out. And it's like the mercy. Bang, get out of here. This, watch out. This feels more like he's about to hit someone else. It's like he knows, but we don't know that someone's there. Watch out. Looks like he's looking into my soul. <laughs> Got to get him to three quarters a bit sooner. But yeah, this feels like, oh, are you attacking someone else? Wait, but there's no one here. What happened? And then... So it's almost like you want to do this and then keep that sword low. Like it's almost like you can have that sword down here and it's not distracting. So we can focus just on the face and you can have like open mouth going ah, into this. <laughs> I like the handoff though. <laughs> but hold on, hold on. What is he doing? This guy gets hit in the stomach and then falls back. I, since this is so far away, Personally, what I would do, mm, it's tricky. I would actually not do this as far as a distract. I'm just speaking out loud and you can obviously do whatever you want to do. 
I would have this guy almost roar. Like, he's mad that his friend died, right? We pan over, and this guy is more like this. Rawr, I'm mad you killed my friend. So that there's nothing up here. Why? Because swoom, this then turns into... Oh, and then here is the axe. Is he throwing the axe? Yeah, right. So then the axe is here and hits him in the head. And that's a clean silhouette to see the axe blood spatter out and he can just go and then fall on his back while maybe this guy i know this don't do that because it's way too much work but as he falls down this guy jumps over him or steps on him like he doesn't care like dude you're dead i'm i'm gonna kill this guy and maybe he steps on him or as he is kind of falling backwards this guy american football style tackles him rugby style like pushes him over like get the fuck out of here I swore. But anyway, you know, push him. Because that would be a cool dynamic of these are not soldiers where they care for each other. It's like, oh, you're dead. Get out of my way. I want to fight now. So you can push that with a little bit of personality of this guy. It just goes. Vroom. This was suddenly a bit slow. So he goes, I'm going to kill you. And then it slows all down a bit. This loses a little bit of energy. And he's back into being super stiff here. I know some stuff is, is early animation, but just watch out that we have more twist if you can. And the head will be over, head could be down, you know, like really loosen up because this looks more like a collar. Like I think he has room to move around. So definitely push that a bit. And what is he doing? He swipes this off to then grab this. It's a cool move though. I think if possible, you would have to find a way for this guy to not swing this around so much and if possible show like big arm back anticipation for a stab and then again this would be the body would be like really forward like he tried he was running and he had so much for, for momentum that he's really leaning forward and maybe because of that you know the the body might be here head is here and he just has to kind of slice down this way Grabs the thing. Same with this here. This feels a bit too. Watch out, broken wrist here. It feels a bit too, um, a bit too simple in terms of that upright pose. You can definitely have a, a stronger twist. Even this here, that's definitely super broken. So you would have to f adjust obviously the wrist rotation, finger posing in here. But twist this guy a bit more because if I look at his root, there's not much going on here. I know he has a bit of twist in there, but this could be. He is in full force. I'm gonna go. And he's, he's, you know, imagine his whole back is towards us. Extended arm. And that way, he can pull it out much stronger. And what he could do... <laughs> maybe he sees the horse, maybe not. But as he pulls this guy back, instead of waiting for so long, you can go... pull Right now. And by pulling him back, it pulls this guy forward. Whoa into the path of the horse and then poof, the horse hits him down here poof, legs up ah. into this oh but a horse takes it hard that's some interesting horse action of i regret nothing do you have i don't see it in the email is there a rider on this shouldn't there be a rider on this because why would the horse straight go straight for this guy I mean, in your reference, you have. So I'm going to assume. Again, I don't see anything in the email. So there could be a rider on this. <laughs> Bam! Gets hit. This guy is back. And that's fine because we are moving the camera and you can end up on the left. We are switching right, left, left, right. But that's totally fine, I think, at this point. <laughs> and then you can, I would have him like step into frame too to get ready. Whoops, that's me moving my frame here. Step into frame as I move my frame. <laughs> I wouldn't cover this. This guy might not be the, the smartest. So it could be and on this, that arm just comes down. So when he's like this, that arm would be down here. You know, the weapon could be off screen. It could be slightly on screen, but lower. There's weight. You know, we want to make this look heavy and and he's just and maybe it could be something where he stomps the ground or he kind of puts those fingers and pulls them back. Like, you know, maybe can make him more animalistic to veer away from the reference. Because if you look at that reference, it's a soldier just kind of the 
but what if this is more animal driven of <laughs> where is he here <laughs> you mean like goes almost on his like puts one hand down you imagine like you dig your your hands and your fingers in and pulls this back and it's just it's not just the biped with a weapon this is some weird animal creature anyway and that's that <laughs> Lots of thoughts, lots of destructive thoughts. Feel free to disregard whatever you want. But these are my thoughts. My main thing is um, you were concerned about adding more overlap follow through. I would, um, even if it's just maybe it's not overlap follow through as much as you think that would destroy the shot, just adding a bit more. But I would push the poses to get away from the rigid aspect of it and then think of um, just visibility and silhouettes and how we can separate foreground, make around backgrounds for some cool stuff. All right. Yeah, that's kind of that. It's going to be super cool. It's a really cool sequence. Thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whenever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.